Hi folks, how are you doing? Today is the 11th of May, 2023. Welcome to my channel. My name is Claire Thackeray. Let's get the introductions over with and move on. How are you all doing? Do you know, I'd always planned to do this video today, but I'd planned to do it this afternoon once I'd finished my work. And I went to the loo, TMI, I know, and I had this weird sensation that came over me. And I was like, whoa, what's this? But it was something that I cannot explain. And I just went really, is, not, is the word repressed? Is it repressed? <laughs> I went really, maybe it is a word, I don't know, but I went really edgy. And I went really within myself. And I went at the same time, went quite like I was on an adrenaline rush. So I'm feeling repressed. I'm going into myself, but at the same time, I'm on an adrenaline rush, okay? And I'm like, God, what? Because that's just not me. And I was like, what is this? And I got, that's how I used to feel being mother to the Crays, Ronnie and Reggie Cray. That's the energy that I was dealing with as a woman and as a mother. And what she then went on to describe, so basically, I'm oh, sorry, I am today's video, I'm going straight into it because this is a woman that goes straight into it. And I think this video is going to be the kind of video that we just go bang, straight in. It's not going to be fluffy. It's not going to be love and light. We're going to get to the basics. We're going to get to the core of it. So we're jumping straight in. And she's saying, us craze never pissed around. Okay, you can tell I'm trying to cray when we start with the, um, if you ever watched my Ronnie and Reggie channeling when Ronnie just started swearing, I apologise now if that still happens. When you're channeling somebody from a certain part of, of life, from a life of gangland killings and all kinds of things, you're not going to be sat here speaking kindly and gently. You may drop the odd F-bomb, so I apologise now. Um, but as she says, the craze never pissed about, so we're not going to piss about. <laughs> we're going to jump straight in, as probably the craze did as well, jump straight in. And she said, you know, when you go online and you Google, you Google Violet Cray, who was mother to Charlie Cray, Violet Cray, who died at birth, Ron Cray and Reg Cray, she made it specific that I mentioned all her children and not just the main two, or well, the main three, really. Um, and this, this, the sole reason for this video is to help mums and dads, because we've all got the divine feminine within us, who are going through something similar to Violet. Maybe your child, maybe your, maybe you're living in an area that where crime is prevalent and you're worried about your children. Maybe your children are in crime. Maybe your children are in the court system. Maybe your children are in the prison system. So this video is for whether they're children, teenagers or adults. So hopefully some of it will resonate. Some of it can help you. Please keep an open mind. Don't just see the title and go, God, Claire's going dark with this video. <laughs> There's a reason why I channel these the, the people with a different perspective to life, okay? So, back to what I was saying, because remember, they don't piss about. <laughs> um, she said, you watch, you watch films of her. We've all seen, was it the, um, the craze with Martin and Gary Kemp and Legend? I mean, there's been quite a few. I've seen those two, definitely. And I tell you what, if you're not sure of who these boys are, I say boys, I'll show you them. Grown men. This is them here. So Ronnie and Reg Cray, Ronnie and Reg Cray, East End Gangsters. Um, then I think actually out of the ones I've seen, I think Legend with Tom Tom Hardy. Amazing actor. Yes, an amazing actor and a good looking fella as well. <laughs> but an amazing, amazing, and to do with that role as well, because for although they were twins, they were very different as well. To, to do that, to swap and change like it because he played both brothers. It was amazing. Um, so if you're a bit, who are they? Google them, watch that, buy a book, read on them. In the book I've got here that I've still not read, I've, it's on my bookshelf, but I will read it. Our Story by Reg and Ron Cray. So both, they're all, obviously they're all dead. Um, these two are dead, mum's dead as well. Um, so yes. And she said that, that, that we'll get to it at some point. <laughs> She said that the um, 
I wonder if she struggled with speech. I wonder if she was actually a woman of few words, you know. Were you a woman of few words? She says I was a watcher. She watched and observed a lot. She was aware of, we're going into seductive area, I'll come back to that. She was aware of a lot more that was going on with the craze than was led to believe. She said, you are as a mother, even if you pretend you don't know and you put the, oh, I can't believe that's happened, energy on, you're aware of it. Even if you're not aware of it, whatever they're doing, you get them edgy feelings that I felt, and I just said them rather than those again. Um, you get them edgy feelings, you see. You get them edgy feelings that you would get um, when your son is out playing with guns, when people with guns are after them, when people are wanting to blow them to pieces, when people are wanting to blow your brain to pieces. Back to what I was saying. So she's saying you are aware of it, even if it's just an edgy feeling that you can't explain. <sighs> I'm feeling quite shivery as well. Um, so films, the films about the craze make her out to be this glamorous matriarch of the Cray family. My boys and patting them on the shoulder. She said there was that. She was she was that and she did that and she encouraged it and she reveled in her boys. I mean, the Crays themselves, when I channeled them, said the world that they lived in, you were either killed or you killed, basically, that's what they said. Um, which again doesn't make it right, but that's the world that they lived in. And she's also drawn my attention to certain areas of the East End of London that are still like that now. So it's okay going in to these areas and telling them to happy clap. It's not going to work. It's not going to work to just happy clap your way out of it. Um, you have to get to the core of it. You have to get to the core of what's causing the crime. Um, I'm aware that we're flipping a bit. I'm going to try and pull it in a bit. And uh, she wasn't glamorous. She was, she was it, but there was also a different side to her. There was also a side that when behind closed doors, feels as though she was living on her nerves. Let me show you her, let me show you her. I feel really shaky. Okay. So she's your typical East End gangster mall. She's your typical matriarch. Um, you look at her, you think strong woman. You might think hard woman as well. That's fine, because don't forget she was all of it. This is her with the... Boys were young. Let's see if it zooms in for you. Yeah. And where is it? Where is it? Where is it? And this is her when they were a bit older. So there was, if you heard that sneeze, that was Gary sneezing. So there was celebrity around the money, power, but there was this different side as well. Let me just get a picture. And that's the, for those that are new to the channel. I'll just remind you, okay? And then she moved on to the fact that living like that, living in the world where your sons, your daughters, and more in the modern world now, or your husband or your father, she's bringing me back to the divine feminine now. When you're a woman, and it's father, husband, sons, daughters in this in, in the modern world, we, we know of girls in crime, that are out in deep crime like these were, she said, It's almost like you're on tenterhooks waiting because the truth of it is and she said this is a message to those that are watching me hi that from the crime world nice to meet you um because sometimes it's easier to get to the women folk than it is the men folk it's easier to pull a bullet out on violent cray than it is to pull one on one of these two and she was living with that all her life she was living with that for most of her life why does it say all of her life? Yeah, because the East End of London. We, again, we see East End of London and we see those terraced houses and we see, you know, the the, the camaraderie that was there. But there was also the underbelly that was there. So, 
She was born on the 5th of August, 1909. She died, I've got two dates, 4th, 7th of August, 1982. Her numerology came to 32. 32 is creativity and spiritual growth. And this is what I always teach. People think spiritual growth happens in a, in a sacred circle somewhere. Yes, it does. But real spiritual growth happens when you come into a lifetime like the one I'm talking about. So if you find yourself as a woman, be it your dad, your husband, your sons, your daughter, and you're living amongst pandemonium gangster land, there is spiritual teaching in that. And it may be difficult to swallow and understand, eh, what? I don't understand. But there is spiritual teaching and spiritual growth in that. And what she's saying is, it's because when you go back and you, you die and you, and, you trans, and you transition and you're sat doing your life review and you're looking back at what you did and what you let happen, especially from the perspective of a mother, okay? So you're a mother, you're responsible for those children. She said it can be nipped in the bud early doors. But what happens is you laugh, you joke, you nudge them, you pat them on the back. It's She's saying it starts at school. It starts at school. It starts in the street. She said, she's showing me one of them was a bully. Which one is it? Can you show me which one? She said both of them at some point. She said Ron more so. Ron was a bully. Um, she said they always used to have fights in the street. It was a norm. It was a norm to have fights. But she said there was something there that made him take it to the next level. And I should have stopped it, but we laughed. She's now showing me her sisters, her and her sisters, other women folk in the street, and they're laughing and they're cheering it on. She said, so a lot of it could have been stopped early doors. So spiritual growth, you, you live that life, you go over, you do your life transition, your life review, and you look back and you go, God, God, God. So then when you come back into another incarnation, Hopefully, you, she'll probably find herself maybe in a similar situation where she's put into a feisty area of the world somewhere, maybe with a feisty husband, feisty sons, um, and then it's how she can transpire out of that. So then we got three and two, which is five. So this, this, this blew my mind. Prosperity, justice, knowledge, mathematical understanding, Spontaneous, spontaneous, I don't even say that word, and love, and love the adrenaline rush of the right child. Oh. My writing is appalling. So, number five is under understanding spontaneous, mathem sorry, mathematical understanding, spontaneous, spontaneous, I know it's wrong, spontaneity. Loving the adrenaline rush from the blind challenges of life. So she thrived off adrenaline. She thrived off adrenaline. But we all know with adrenaline. When you get adrenaline, be it to get through a court appearance or to get you through a hospital appointment or you live in adrenaline like this, it's, it is actually brilliant. It can be brilliant when you're going through it. You're all fired up and you're ready to go and you're ready to fight and you're ready to appear in court and you're ready to go for it. But next day, when you have that huge come down and you start to shake and you start to feel tired and you start to feel vulnerable, it's almost like she says, then you've got to cause the adrenaline to come again. Um, she said her sons were the same, they needed that constant adrenaline. She's saying the ADHD. Did we cover this in the she's saying if they were if they were alive today, they'd be diagnosed with ADHD. But yeah, she said they were ADHD. She said they couldn't sit. I think we did, didn't we? Did we? Did we say autism? In what were we saying? It wasn't autism, was it? I think we said they were energy sensitive as well. And we explained, I won't go over what I've already said in that video. But now she's bringing in another aspect, which is ADHD. She says again, teaching children with ADHD the importance of silence and the importance of sitting still and the importance of being able to deal with that fire energy and I'm not saying that everyone with ADHD is going to turn into a gangster in case I do get shot down in flames for this part of the video um, <laughs> honestly um, but ADHD which is a sad story, really, isn't it? 
they did say in that video that they couldn't sit still. And let's get into, we're already into it. The energy feels strange, in a good way though. Fragmented, she's saying it's fragmented. It was all fragmented. See, the thing is when you channel a soul, you channel their energy and you channel, you get a, a glimpse of their world and you get a glimpse of their challenges, their successes. And energy is everything, it feels very fragmented. When I was setting up my little altar, because I've got an altar here with a Mother Mary statue, okay? And I've got a candle. Let's see if I can pick it up if it's not too hot. Drop it everywhere and burn myself. But yeah, what, what smell is that actually? It is. Oh, it's, we, we know me and gold writing. La Jolie Muse. Butchered it. Uh, midnight Tulip. So that is Midnight Tulip. Um, I was shuffling my decks, getting this altar ready. And the cards, boom, exploded as they usually do. And this one fell out, Anger and Chains. So this is from the Dark Mirrors deck by Laura Saba, or Saver. And it was Anger and Chains that fell out. Um, caught up in your anger ties you in chains. Dealing with your anger as well. So we're talking about anger now. Because the more angry you are, the more aggressive you become, either with your voice, with your actions, the more you attack the external world, but you're also damaging the internal world. And it's having to stop that anger or understand what makes you so angry. Um, she said it does start with mothers. She said we can dress it up as much as we like and we can blame it on the system, we can blame it on the school system, we can blame it on the police system, we can blame it on the neighbours, we can blame it on the on the neighbor on, on, on the community, we can blame it on everybody. But it starts she said it's actually it actually starts in the womb. She's showing she she's showing me her pregnant with them now and her marriage with her husband. And that was a quite she said it was a very aggressive marriage. They're arguing, there's physical stuff going on there. So you know my story when I say that babies, I've said, the, shall I tell you it again, the story, Chernobyl. There was a woman that was pregnant during the Chernobyl disaster. disaster, disaster. Her husband worked at the factory. So every, you know it blew up, radiation and all that. Anyway, most people died around it. This woman survived. No radiation in her body whatsoever. None at all, right? True story. Her baby died as it was a miscarriage when they tested the baby it was full of radiation and they got this doctor and the doctor says what you don't realize is that babies absorb everything from the mother i'll say that again babies absorb everything from the mother i remember when i watched it, i was like oh, god everything not just what you eat what you drink what you but what you think your relationship, your fears, your phobias, your anger. So take it back into, into, into her marriage, the violence that was there and the toxicity that was there um, and the upheaval that was there and the stress that was there and the society that were around them. And those two babies were absorbing that. So they're already coming out of the womb into the world and it's already kind of set for them. The stage is set. But there is still hope. You can still pull it back, but she didn't. She kept it going. Um, anger and chains, her anger and chains, their dad's anger and chains, their anger and chains, the, the twins. And she's saying everything that happens then is just on top of it, on top of it, on top of it. The deck that she chose was the Pastoral Tarot. And those of you that have watched my... Um, James, James, you went, oh God, not, not going royal, not going royal. <laughs> I'm not going royal. Uh, um, what was his name? James Herriot, how rude. I wish I'd had this deck on a channel, James Herriot, because it's a farming deck, it's a pastoral deck. Look, it's all farm life and animals. It'd have been a lovely deck to, to use with him, actually. Can we have another? Can we have a card? Let's have a card.
Five of Swords, yeah, look at that. I know, I know what, when she chose this deck, I was like, really, Violet, are you sure? Because this is a, you see, I did it. This is quite a light deck, Violet, are you sure? I can understand deck mirrors, but pastoral tarot. Two angry birds attacking each other. The Five of Swords taking things at all cost. So she's spoken about seeing them as little children, but then we've got the Queen of Swords at the bottom with the chess pieces. So what I'm being shown now is a Queen of Swords type energy. So Queen of Swords that was removed from her heart, from although the it's difficult because I'm talking to her and actually she feels like a really nice woman. She feels like a really interesting woman. She feels like she's full of wisdom. But in that lifetime, she was more Queen of Swords than the Queen of Cups. It was all, she said it was fists and voice as well. And then we've got these two here amongst it. Attacking each other, attacking the world. Having to pay Peter, having to pay, what is it? Having to not pay Peter to pay Paul or something, something like that. She's saying, take it back now to the world in which she was a mother in that lifetime. And many women are finding themselves in now when you've got bills to pay, you've got jobs to do. And she's not making excuses. You've got bills to pay, you've got jobs to do. You're in a relationship or a partnership that is totally toxic. You're in a house that needs repairing. You're in, this is how it all adds up. It all adds up. She says the, the the answer to it is, and the and they're not the only answer is, if you're not in a stable place, don't have children. And she said again, taking it back to that lifetime, you didn't have a choice. She's saying, but women now have choice in most cases. So it's about women going forward, making sure that they're in a good place that they're in a good relationship, that they're on top of their demons, they're on top of their Queen of Swords energy. Because the truth is we all have all the queens within us, the swords, the cups, the pentacles. And it's the same with the men. They have all the kings within them. It's just which king, which queen are you going to feed? Which king, which queen are you going to feed? Um, I'm thriving off of it as well. She says thriving off of it. So she's showing me Bethnal Green, obviously, where they were, East End of London, and she's, it was almost like, what am I, what am I seeing? My son's harder than your son, my husband's harder than your husband, um, that kind of energy. And her thriving off that, and her thriving off the fact that here she's got two of the most hardest, ruthless, I mean, they ruled London, they're her sons, she's protected, she's safe, but is she? Is she safe? She said, I was safe from the, she was, it's very complex. I was safe, I was safe from the weak ones, she's saying, the small time ones, but the big time gangsters, she felt very vulnerable with the big, I don't know if there was any attacks to her. They'd have been an idiot to do it, wouldn't they? She says, there were plenty of threats. Plenty of threats. I mean, she was plenty. Of, she says there were plenty of threats. She says there was still an honour among thieves, but the potential was always there. The potential was always there. She's showing me she go further and further out of their field. It is as you know, it, it, the energy of the home, the local neighbourhood. You were okay. It's the further. Does that make sense? It's the further afield you go. The gangsters that don't know your family. The gangsters that come out of that street. The gangsters that come out of East End. As you go further afield, the threat's always there. She said, no, I, didn't, I don't know if this happened or if this was one of her fears, but I'm seeing her in Bethnal Green in the house. And I'm seeing lots of bullets coming into the wind, into the front front window. And is that analogy? I don't think I don't feel as though that happened. Might have done. Did that happen? She's 
Just bullets were fired at the house. Bullets were fired at the house. Um, I don't see where I'm going to take it. So bullets were fired at the house. What was it like being their mother? What was it like being mother to the Crays? Ruthless. Dark. Exciting. I couldn't, I couldn't deal with a boring life. I couldn't deal with a boring life. I created the monsters. It was all fun and games until they went down. And then life got lonely when they because they went to prison eventually. They went to prison. Um, and life got lonely. I used to get mocked on the street after they'd gone down. It was easy pickings. I suppose it was my karma. She was worried about Ron's mental health, how it deteriorated when he went down. And I've been now shown Broadmoor, where he went to Broadmoor. Show me Jimmy Savile. We know Jimmy Savile did laundry work abroad more. Um, you see, it's almost like there's two people. There's her, how she is now in spirit, looking back on her life, and then there's a violet in the flesh. That excuse me, bear print. And again, <laughs> um, so there's. Two Violet says the spirit Violet that's looking down on her life that wishes she could have done everything different. Then we've also got this other physical Violet that thrived off it, loved it, hated it, switched off from it, encouraged it, um, reveled in it, ran from it, ran to it. It's almost very much like, do you have ADHD as well? Hmm. She said there were very different times back then, in that area of where they were. It was all go, go, go. There was always something happening. Terror I, I grew up in I, I grew up in a terror street in Eastern Park in Leeds. Um, obviously not nothing, com I mean, <laughs> Eastern Park now is probably very much like Bethnal Green was then. Um, but back then it wasn't, but it was that energy where basically if terror houses, because I forget that people international watch me. Um, and when I waffle on with, with stuff that I reckon that everyone knows and, I, and they don't because it's different countries. Terraced houses. So terraced houses are like this. So you're all in a street and you're all literally, you're out your front door, you, next door's front, you, you're there, you're all there to each other. I mean, let me show you Bethnal Green, how it was to make more sense to you. Um, there's no, you can hear shouting through the walls as well. I know when I first moved in with Gary, he had a terraced house. Um, and you could hear everything. I mean, it, that one was a back-to-back. -back, so we had back, side, side. So you were sandwiched with it. Bethnal Green, old pictures then. God, I'll write it out for you. <laughs> so... I get more. What was that? I don't know. Um, so that's old Bethnal Green. So that's the Bethnal Green that she would have been talking about, yeah? So you, you, you're living in poverty. You're worried about bills. So you're already, I mean, many people are like that now. Maybe this is another reason why this is this video is coming out now. So you're living in poverty, you've got the stress of money, having to make ends meet, 
I mean, to feed your children, you're growing up in a, you're living in a, in a, in a pan that is about to bubble and overflow. There's crime around you. There's poverty around you. There's disease around you. There's broken families around you. There's violence around you. There's a house to clean. I mean, we're talking about the days now when people used to go out and clean the steps. We used to see women on the knees cleaning steps. And they prided themselves on the perfect perfect house. And she's saying, what you don't realise is, a lot of the steps were always cleaned, the windows were always cleaned, that everything was all done. But behind closed doors, it was a different matter. It was all facial, it was all for sure. But behind closed doors, you, she says you'd get a woman and she'd be scrubbing the shit out, scrubbing the shit out of her step. <laughs> Scrubbing the shit, I'll say it again, scrubbing the shit out of a step and then she'll walk indoors and she'll get a punch off her husband because that's what she's showing me. Right, where are we going to go? So, I want to ask her, advice for mums for children in crime. Let's go back a bit. Advice for mums whose children live in inner cities where there is a high crime rate. Are we going to use cards? Advice for mums. We'll do a card and then we'll, we'll do some channeling. Advice for mums who live in inner city crime areas for children. Pulling on the wisdom from the lifetime of Violet, of Violet, of Violet Cray. Pulling on your wisdom from the lifetime of Violet Cray. Yeah. Right, this is deep. I know why she chose this deck now. King of Pentacles, but look at him. He's got his bottles of beer. She's saying fathers, present fathers, are a big issue. She said, we don't like to admit it, especially when a woman's alone. There's pride, in, there can be pride in being a single mother. But... It can also be a double-edged sword because children need stable parents, stable pa father, stable mother. And again, she'd reflect on her own life and her own mistakes. So it's about having, she said it is about having a good male figure. Um, looking at the heritage of the man that you're marrying, that you're sleeping with, being aware of him. You know, are they all drunks in his family line? Are they all aggressive? Are they all in and out of prison? Are they all in weird marriages? Looking at the, you know, has he, you know, does that make sense? So it starts with the parents. Five of cups at the bottom, which is despair, loss. What advice do you give? said it goes even further back it's about aiming for better it's about wanting not when she says when she says better it's not i want a rich cuz but i want a rich house i want i want four bedrooms five bedrooms six bedrooms i want a, a four before it's not that, that she's talking about but she said it's about wanting a decent life partner beside you because that's half the battle being a decent person yourself and then getting a decent life partner next to you is all the battle it's the, it's the biggest part of the battle. It's having, it's being in a dependable home. She says when the home itself is dependable, it's got a starting point. The children have already got an example before they then go out into the big wide world. It's when there's chaos in the home, as there was in the cray time, no judgment in this, when there's chaos in the home and then there's chaos in the external world. So it's about making sure the home and the examples that you as a mum and dad and grandparents are all showing them a better way of being. That are things like, because it feels like there was maybe addiction going on with the, with, maybe with the crazed dad. The addictions, you know, I mean, is this their grandfather? Let me show you him. I'm not, I'm not judging him, but... It, <laughs> Where is he? It's, you know, I don't think that's their father. I think it's a grandfather. 
but do you see what I mean? It's it starts with the family, it starts with the family line, it starts with the it starts in Winter Primary School when the teacher says to you, your little son to so and so, your little Simon, your little Peter, your little Charlotte, your little Rosanna, your little whoever has pulled somebody's hair, and you, go, oh, and you laugh and go, well done. Um, when I was growing up in the 80s, there was this thing in the 80s, and I remember it well, and it cringes me now, um, where you were, you were taught if somebody hit you in the playground, you hit them back. <laughs> I'm not laughing, but it was that, I mean, that was the 80s when I grew up. But it's that kind of a thing. It's teaching them better things as children. Because there's no point waiting until they're in Broadmoor to start teaching them the values of life. There's no point trying to go into a prison cell and teach them the value of life when they're already further down. She says the near, the sooner you can get it, the better. Okay. Um, wanting a better life for yourself. So it starts with the job that you're doing. It starts with your friendships. It starts with the people that you're in physical relationships with. It starts when you're choosing who your life partner's gonna be. It starts when you're choosing where you're gonna live. It's, you said it's about aiming higher. And again, not I want a four bedroom house. It's not that she's talking about. I want a happy, stable home. I want a life partner that loves and supports me. If we have children, I want to be in a stable mental place to deal with it. I, and, and starting, she said, again, take it right back to your own childhood as a teenager, as a child. If you grow up in these areas, I, mean, I grew up in, in Eastern Park and then went to a council estate. So I'm not sat here talking to you from a nice little bungalow in Lincoln going wag 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 I've been in these areas um and it's about wanting better wanting better and she says there is opportunities out there for people so advice for mums whose children are now so we've got now we're moving on to children that are already in a life of crime she's showing me children that go into crime She's saying the verse that's starting young, there's a lot of children that are starting young now. Um, she, Violet, like the craze, when I asked them a similar question, they said this answer. They said it actually has to come from the top end gangsters to down tools. I know people are going to laugh at me for saying that. Um, but that's what the craze says. There's no point. She is saying that this is already happening though. She says a lot of youngsters that go into crime are looking for the hero. They're looking for someone to look up to. So it's they get they get attracted like moths to a flame to the local dealer, the local gangster, the local nut job, the local they get they're like moths to a flame. And it's about these gangsters. And maybe this is something coming because they have spoken about this. Where the top, it needs to come from the top down. And people that have come from a life of crime need to talk more, go online, talk around school. She's saying that is vital. She said, imagine this. Imagine if the craze would have gone into schools to do talks to kids that were on the wrong line. Because she's saying you can't expect your straight-laced Mr. So-and-so or your straight-laced Miss So-and-so to sit down with a kid that is on the brink of going into committing one of the biggest mistakes of his life. She said, but if you sent these to him that had lived it, that could talk the language, talk the lingo, get down to their level, but also had that hero energy, which they do, they do have the hero energy, imagine how that can change things. You know, wow, Mum, I don't know. Ron Cray came into school today and he told us about his life and it just would and it has a ripple effect going out. So there's more of that needed. What? Where were we? Child of crime, child of crime, child of crime. Um, so any gangsters that are watching me, going to do that for me, please? Um, or, pe yeah, or people that have retired because i'm sure this video will attract a different tribe that usually follow me so that's things you can be doing 
um, starts at the top down to the bottom. What can parents be doing? So your child advice for mothers. So it's the stuff we've already said, nipping it in the bud early doors. Not making excuses for them. When the so she's showing me now, Ronnie and Reggie, when it started to get big with them and please come to the door and, and it started to get heated. It went from the playground to something else entirely. It's about teaching them a respect for authority as well. She said, that's something, there's a problem. She said it was back then. She said, but it's also now there's a real disrespect for authority. She said, teachers are getting mocked. Police officers are getting mocked. We go to TikTok culture now. There's a crime committed. And what do we have? People filming officers goading them. Now, I know in those areas, it's not all perfect. But it's about respect. It's about teaching respect to early doors. It's all childhood stuff. Early doors respect. Um, and when it does knock on your door, opening your eyes to it. No matter how hard it is, whether it's burglary, battery, rape, murder, whatever it is, admit, open your eyes to it, early doors. She said, she's a woman from a certain time. She saw, <laughs> sorry, I'm going to burp then. Um, yep, did burp again. This is what happens, you see, we do a lot of energy work. We've been doing the group healing. Do you know if you have a healing session and you find yourself during a healing session burping a lot or after it or trumping, it's energy moving through your body. So don't be embarrassed. And any good healer should know that. So if you ever go to a hands-on healing session, you start trumping and burping and... It's actually how energy flows out of your body. Anyway, moving back on to this, she said, or it's a clip around the ear. She is a woman of her generation. I am not advocating that. I'm just repeating what she said. Um, let's pull a card for him. Because I like pulling cards. She says, de-glamorise it. De-glamorise it. She said it's, she's showing me now our modern day footballers that are a lot of the time womanizers that are living very loose lives. Some of them, not all of them, and we glamorize it. She's showing me video games now that are violent. She's, so she's talking about our modern world. She's showing me films that are violent. It starts with all these different things. It's like the, the different parts of a cake, the eggs, the milk, the flour, the sugar. Advice for mums, advice for mums, your children are into crime and the chariot's just dropped out. One more card please, Violet, advice for mums and children uh, living a life of crime. The inner child card, she keeps coming back to it, she keeps coming back to the inner child. Um, yeah, the seven of pentacles, parents that can't cope, parents that are, and I'm not beating parents up, so please don't think that, but... This is, this is what she's showing with the cards and the energy. Parents feeling overwhelmed with it. Why do parents feel overwhelmed with it? Because she's saying that you see a child as a reflection of you. You see a child as an extension of you. So when somebody comes to your door and says your son's just blown a pub to pieces, you take that personal. Ooh, is that true for parents? It is, she's saying it is true. She's, they may not want to admit it, but it's true. You, you, you see your children are an extension of you. She's showing me now. You know, when you go into housing, they've got the family pictures up and you see the mum. And it's, it's all, it's, she's showing me the Insta ready life, modern day world. Now, we've come into the modern day world where it's all Instagram ready. These are my children. You just want perfection. So, I was shuffling my cards, put my deck on the desk, right? And I, that's at the bottom, blinded to pain. You're blinded to it. You're blinded to it. Not my, not my little so-and-so, not my little, whatever his name is, not my little Ronnie. Little Ronnie wouldn't do that. And even if he did anyway, he must have deserved it anyway. That's the kind of thing she's showing me and, 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 and talking about, if that makes sense. Blinded to pain, blinded to your own pain, but blinded to their pain as well. 
So, advice to mothers is the chariot. She's saying women and mothers are more powerful than they think. She said women and mothers are the cornerstone, the, the centre of the family, the matriarch of the family. They have more power than they think and than they're led to believe. And it starts with the mothers and it, she said it can stop with the mothers as well. Ronnie and Reggie spoke about this in their channel when they said about um, that wherever they are in the universe, they're, they're enjoying watching some of the, is it like Mums Against Sword? Not Sword. Mums Against Grunt Crime. And mums Against, they're, they're really behind that energetically, you know, really behind that energetically. Um, so community with mums. She is showing me something coming in the future where society is going to start breaking down. It's already started. It's already started. The towers are toppling. She said, and as these towers start to topple, more women, more of the divine feminine are going to find their voice. And we're going to start gradually seeing, and it's already starting, more community energy coming back. More mothers saying enough is enough. And this isn't about judgment to anyone, but this is about change coming in. She said, it's, she said, there's also, she said, I was lucky, I was lucky in my lifetime, I never, I was never scared of my children. She said, I never feared them. She said, sometimes they'd come in covered in blood, she could smell death on them. She could, she, she's showing me down the nails, blood and stuff and gunk and, and, and blood tissue and she's showing me on there. She said, when they've, when they've been, a, when they've been shooting and stuff, what well, you do, and they've got, she's showing me their white shirts and bits of brain on their white shirts, bits of guts on their white shirt. Um, she was even when they came in like that. She was never scared. She she said, but there are mothers out there that are scared of their own children. What do you give for? What do you say for that violet that are scared of their own children? She said, you've got to die trying. She said, you've got to die trying. She says, being a parent's a, a painful thing. Mm. You have to die trying. Mm. I just, I had a school friend. I'll share this story. I had a school friend with you, um, not with you. <laughs> I had a school friend that got killed. She got murdered. She got tortured to death. Back in the nineties. And one of the people that, she was killed by a gang, and one of the people that killed her, there's a story, because um, my mum had a friend who was friends with their mum and grandmother, okay? And the, basically, there's one of the kids that killed her, because he was a teenager that killed her, so I can bring my story in now. He was running around the, the table as a, as a young man, running around, running around, running around. And I think it was the nana, said the grandma, nana, grandmother said, stop running around, you'll, you'll knock the table and you'll burn yourself. And apparently, he picked, this is as a little boy, he picked the cup up, the hot cup of tea, and he threw it at the nana. And the mum laughed at him. That's the kind, so I was just reminded of that story. Then he went on to do, uh, to torture and stuff, which again, it starts when they're small. It starts, it starts when they're small, when they're getting laughed at. Um, it's a complex subject. It's probably one we can't really proper clear, proper clear in one video, but hope that you're enjoying it and hope that you're getting something from it. So never be scared of your children. She said, there is a lot of people at the minute that are totally overwhelmed with life. She said, it is sad. She said, you can call on the goddesses as well. So if people like Mother Mary, you know, calling on people like Mother Mary, calling on Mother Earth. saying it's just society is just for not for everyone but for so many people out there society's just crumbled she, she's now showing me young mothers that are living in flats or bed sits where their mother's not up to much and the grandmother and they've got no she said it's just it's it's where is it it's this card it's generational trauma 
it's it, and it carries on until one person says stop. She says it carries on until one person says stop. So, advice for mums whose children are going through the court system. She says, go to court and listen to everything. That's what I'm saying, go to court and listen to everything. She said, because it's part of your healing as well and a part of you. And she said, she's, what are you saying? Um, it's part of your healing too. Don't not go to court. She said a lot of mums don't want to go to court. They don't want to see their child in handcuffs. They don't want to see their child getting dragged down to court, getting dragged down to prison. But go to court and hear every word. Working with the police as well, asking the police exactly what's going on. What's, it's just not. It's not burying your head in the sand. It's not. I again take it back to experiences that I can bring in. I, growing up on a council estate, the amount of mums that would get a knock on the door and you'd hear it. They're not my son. Wouldn't do that. My son wouldn't do that. My son wouldn't do that. I can. I won't obviously not start naming people on a YouTube video, but I can name at least five people that would do that. Um, not my son, not my son, not my son, not my son, not my son. It was, it was. And, and, and from my experience on, on growing up on that estate, um, they just went bad to worse, those lads. They started off the cheeky little chappies and, you know, throwing the odd pebble at someone's window or I don't know what, what silly lads do and stuff like that. You see, I've just done it what silly lads do, but it's nipping it in the bud early doors. It's nipping it in the bud early doors. Um... Yes, nip it in the bud, early doors. Caught. So we've gone to a court. You're in court, we're in court. We're in court now. Um, advice for mums whose children are going into court, the court system. Strength. You see, like, again, look at that. What's this here? Eight of Pentacles. It's a mum stitching. It's this old, we say old fashioned way of being, but mothers being loving mothers, loving, stable nurturers. Look at that mum there. I mean, she's probably a grandma. No, she's a mum. I think she's a mum. And she's stitching, she's crocheting, crocheting. Stitching back, it's about the home. It starts in the home. And look at this card, the strength card. Look at the the, the, the big lion with the cub. Would you call a baby like a baby tiger a cub? Hmm, I don't know. Yes, you would. Um, the strength, you've got to be strong. You've got to be strong going through it. Let's pull a card from this deck. Fragmentation. Calling in the storm, fragmentation. You feel fragmented, she's saying, as a mum when you're watching your son or your daughter in the dock. She said, and a lot of the, she said, actually, a lot of the time when parents, it wasn't my son, and then they, or they actually they put a hard facade on, a facade. It's because it's they're scared. It's because at some level they're scared. They're scared. Because again, it comes back down to the, the child as a, as a reflection of you. The child is an extension of you. You don't want to lose face. She's talking about society. And it's the same now. Don't care what you say. 50, 60 years later, we've got a different culture now. It's all on Instagram. You know, and people don't want to lose face. Don't want to lose face. Um... She says, supporting women around you who are going through this system as well. She says, she said, that's also another problem. She said, women have become so fragmented from each other. They're, they're judged and they're hissed at and they're judged and they're belittled and they're mocked and they're, but really they need support. 
grandmothers stepping forward to support mothers stepping forward to support mothers um, society she so says it's all about society that's broken down and that's not her blaming she's already said she played a big part but it's all the different it's all the different chess pieces she's showing me a jigsaw and it's not just one piece of the jigsaw that's the answer oh yes that, that's the answer boop piece of jigsaw's there i've done it i've answered it oh god there's another 200 pieces it's about this jigsaw it's mass it's mass. It starts with everything, diet, nutrition, home, relationships, parents' relationships, um, relationship with yourself as a parent, the relationship of the external family, the relationship of the community, the school team, everything, everything. It's all different. It's all different jigsaw pieces. But she's saying accountability. Um, she's showing me her life review looking back and when she, when she was shown some of the things that... that that, that, that Ronnie and Reggie had been responsible for it, but it devastated her. She says it's taken a lot of years for it to come back, for her to come back, um, for her to recover from that. And the guilt that she felt. So what I mean, she feels very different to the woman that was, to the woman that is now. So, advice for mums whose children are in prison. It's probably going to be the similar thing. Um, advice for mums whose... She's saying a lot of mums can find they get pushed out. She said, this message that she's given me feels like it's for somebody watching. She's giving me that vibe. If your son or your daughter is not wanting to see you in prison, she's, this is a message for, this is a personal message. This, I like it when this happens. It's not because of you. It's because they don't want you to see them in the prison. They also don't want you to see the other hard nuts around them or the other gangsters. They don't want to see their mother in a room full of criminals. So if you're watching me and you're thinking, you're terrified because your son, your daughter, preferably, this is about a son, is this? Um, same with grandsons. Um, but it feels like it's more for a son. It's a personal message. It's not because of you. It's because they're ashamed and they don't want you going into that area. They don't want you going into the court. They don't want the courts of prison, if that makes sense. Um, and she said there's a lot of that where they'll th the mothers tend to get pushed out. She said because the system comes in and takes them. You've bathed them, bathed them, brushed the hair, fed them. Even if it may not have been done the proper way, it was your way. Sent them to school, smacked the bombs when they've been not. This is a different generation woman, by the way. Um, and then all of a sudden, woof, the system's got them and it, everything goes out of your control. Everything goes out of your control. Um, therapy, she's showing me therapy, getting therapy, getting help, getting healing, therapy. Um, she's showing routine, she's showing me routine as well. She's showing me her just wanting to stay in bed and not get up, closing the curtains, sitting in dark, being in the dark. Um, and it's not the answer. She's saying it's not the answer because you need to get up. She said sometimes you just need to get up out of bed. You need to get your hair brushed. You need to open the curtains, get dressed. And even if it's just that you go sit downstairs, she said you have to keep going. You cannot go under with it. You've got to keep going. Acknowledge your role in it. She said it's the best way to do it is to acknowledge your role through it. Because it's almost like I'm seeing her after those two are in prison. This feels like it's an 80s, you know. She's showing me. Um, even though I know they went to prison before. And it's just desolate. It just feels desolate. It's almost like she's frozen. It's almost like this energy of just frozen. She can't even look at herself. It's like she don't even, she doesn't want to see it. She can't see it. She said, we must see it. She said, because she, we have to see it when we go over the other side. Let's pull the card.
for the new beginning, the Knight of Wands. It's taking the leap of faith. Taking the leap of faith. What would that be in, resp it's in response to? Taking the leap of faith, a card from Pete. That's interesting. She says, don't abandon them neither. She said, because there is the other end of the spectrum. She said, I was the other end where worshipped them and didn't want to see it, etc. And then there's the other end that it's almost like I'm seeing two sides of the coin now where mums find out the son's done a crime, dead to me, never see you again. She said, that's wrong too. She said, no matter what they've done, even if it's involving children or whatever. She, this is literally what she's saying. Do not stop contact. She's because you don't stop being a mother just because they're in prison. She's because there is the other end where mothers are just literally. She said, and again, it's, sometimes it's that the fact that, 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 that you're dead to me and they can be quite cold mothers. And there's also that there's also another part where there's also mothers that just like like the boys not wanting the mothers to enter prison they don't want to see does that make it's a very conflict conflicting complex situation but i love that your your mother you, you you don't just stop being a mother because they've gone to prison you don't just stop being a mother because they're in court i'll tell you another story as well this is another story um that i've just been reminded of there was so Long time, long time ago, we knew somebody that went to court and he got on the bus with his mum and he said, back then, I thought a lot of this still do it, a dear ride, can I have a dear rider please, bus driver? So his mother, who I wasn't a fan of, said, don't know why you're getting a dear rider because I don't think you'll be coming out when you, basically, basically get a one way ticket to the, to the courthouse because you won't be needing a dear rider because after what you've done, you're going down. I remember that that was a mother to a son and it's like it's very just remind what she says you don't stop being a mother just because they're going through the police system so you've got responsibility to yourself you've got responsibility to them you've got responsibility to society so you don't stop being a mother just because they're going through the court system regardless of what they've done and that's not codependent fluffing them up we you got your hanky it's none of that that's not what I'm talking about um yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? There is no straight answers with Claire's videos. Claire, can't you just channel someone like, I don't know, George Michael? No. <laughs> boring. Um, I'm not saying George Michael's boring, but you know what I mean. Right. How long have we gone on for? What else wants to come through, Violet? What else want messages? Bitch your nails. Have you enjoyed this video? Has it helped? I think it's the type of video you watch. You think about it and then you come back and you watch it again. Knight of Pentacles. One more card on this deck. Whoops. Death at the bottom, endings and new beginnings. She's saying, you know, when you go over there and you've come from the life that she came from, there is no judgment. That's nice. It's about moving forward. Each lifetime we have, you may be right now where Violet was in one way, shape or form. Crime may be knocking on your door. She's saying there is more to your soul than that. That is just one chapter of a 500 page book. So think of the book as your soul. Think of the chapters as your lifetimes, your past lives, your future lives. That just because you've lived that lifetime doesn't mean to say you are that. That you are evil, that you are dark, that you are this. Because your next lifetime you could come back and you could be Mother Earth herself. Obviously not Mother Earth, but you know what I mean. Um... That there is always another opportunity. There is always chance to change. She says, even when you're in prison, she says, 
they actually look, you see, energetically. She said, this all contracts are vast, you know. We've said this about the craze. Um, she said a lot of the old style criminals, and she said not just old style, but a lot of them that go over as part of their help to clear karma and stuff. She said, we energetically visit prisons. She's showing me her now sitting with mums that are going through court systems energetically with a hand on them. Obviously, she'll be ghost, she'll be spirit, but she'll be there. Um, she's showing me Ron and Reg going into prisons and going into... That's they seem to be drawn to younger offenders, to, to Ronnie and Reggie. Because, yeah, it's, yeah cause that, that's where it's needed. It's the young offenders as well, isn't it? It's the, going into young offenders, going into prisons. Um, and, and, and helping energetically as ghosts, spirits, um, energy. It's vast, isn't it? It's vast. Opportunity. You can always move forward. So even if you're in, you're watching this and say you're in prison, there's always a new day. There is always a day that you can change. There is always another lifetime that comes. There is, or even on your deathbed, there is always that moment. It doesn't matter when you do it, as long as you do it. Um... And it's the same for mothers and parents. There's always, 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 always new opportunities. You may have let something get out of control, but there is always an opportunity in the future or in the present that you can step in and change it. Moving forward. That's nice as well. See, I, I apologise when he chose this deck and I was like, why? Mommy duck, baby ducks. It's going to be the mother's. I tell you what, this new earth that people keep we're on about, <laughs> including myself, it'll be the divine feminine. That'll the new energy wants to come in as the divine feminine. Remember, the divine feminine is in men as well. So it's about not just women ruling the world. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that toxic energy. I'm talking about because that is a toxic energy. Is that that women are going to come in and take everybody? Anyway, but it's the divine feminine within everyone that can come in. Um, and it starts with the mother bears and also the dads. And two nice cards to end on for that deck. Get yourselves healed before kids, honestly. I've, I think I've touched on this in one of my little bite-sized videos that I do. Two more cards to end this video with, Violet, please. Obsession. Obsession with power. Obsession with money. Obsession with greed. Obsession with not loving yourself, colourless angel. Gilded regret. We've all done mistakes. We've all done... Some people's mistakes are way bigger than Violet craze and even the Ronnie and Reggie craze. You know, it's just what some people do in the world. It, that's small fry. But... Healing your regrets, being gentle to yourself, being compassionate to yourself, being compassionate to your present situation and patting yourself on the back for the best that you can do with what you have got, if that makes sense. Obsession with perfection needs to go. Remember what she said about the, the, the steps. Google that if you're an international, honestly. People that seem to used to do that. It always makes me feel a bit... But you know, when I got when I first moved into the terrace house with Gary, I actually remember once washing down the front step and thinking, I think that was like an ancestral thing. Did it once and didn't do it again. Um, because I remember thinking, actually, what am I doing? I'm not judging that. But it's almost like nowadays we have Instagram. That we work we're not on our hands and knees on Instagram, but the Instagram is like the front of the house, isn't it? With the nets and the flowers and the windowsill and the polished windows and the clean steps and the polished steps and all brushed out. Looks perfection. But you go inside, inside the front door and it's chaos. It's a different story. You go into the Instagram account when she's not on Instagram and it's a totally different story. She's saying obsessions with other people's stuff as well. She's got a better husband than me. She's got a better kid than me. Doesn't matter. Don't compare your journey to anyone's. 
even if you're sat there watching this as you're waiting for your child to go down into prison, if you're sat here watching your, 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 in between court hearings or whatever, don't compare yourself to others because nobody has the right to judge you. Nobody has the right to compare. You don't need to compare yourself to others. You are doing, you do you and let other people do them. Because you're saying this whole comparison thing now. Um, yeah, the other day, well, it was, like, it was yesterday, I was separating some lasagna into Tupperware. And I wanted the, <laughs> I wanted the lasagna to be in the middle of the Tupperware. Lined up, cheese facing up. And as I'm doing it with the slides, it kept falling out, oh, getting triggered. And she's like, God, she said, I just, I just flipped it in. And it's like she said, you put in way, she said, women, this is just about mothers, are putting way too much pressure on themselves to do it all, be it all, be Instagram ready. And that's going to have a knock-on effect within the next 10, 20 years. We're going to see the rumbles of that as well. So dealing with our obsessions, Falling back in love with ourselves and honouring ourselves. Because she says the truth is, take it back to basics. To let your child, your children go down that route and to let that come into your home is a lack of self-respect as a woman and as a mother. No judgment, please don't shoot me down in flames. Um, it's a lack of respect, it's all down to respect. And it, them as well, them as well, these as well, they didn't have self-respect. They were lost. I just get this energy of feeling lost. Feeling lost. Um, anything else to say? We've had a good session here. Anything else to say? It's almost like she's in the front room. We always saw the craze and they were in the front room. It's almost like she just took a deep breath and... And it's almost like she's ready to rest now. She wants to go back and rest. We need to rest. Um, she's saying there are lots of helpers in the universe that can help you. She said, she's showing me the help that she does, like she said, with, with mums that are going through court cases. And, and no matter what they've done, she said. She said, because spirit doesn't judge neither. I said this when I did um, Peter Sutcliffe channeling. Spirit don't judge. All the people out there that say to you there's an evil, there's a devil, there's, well there is devil, and we're not going into that energy, but hell, that's what we're talking about. Hell does not exist. Do you know what hell is? That's, that's hell. That's hell. Hell doesn't exist. Does not exist. Even when I take off entities and remove entities, they don't go to hell. They go to a place where they get rehabilitated. Okay? So there is no hell. The hell is what we make up here. If that makes sense. So no matter what you've done, you go to heaven. So that might trigger people. Trigger? <laughs> I always say trigger. That might trigger people. That might trigger people. Because I always get, now and again when I do these videos, yeah, but is there a hell clan? Have they gone to hell? No. No. I saw Peter when he went over, Peter Sutcliffe, and I explained it, didn't I, what I saw. That he went, I, I said there's certain types of angels and beings that will go in. Different to the certain type of beings that will go into a baby that's just died. The angels and the, and, the, and the galactic federation of light and the beings that go in for that are very different. Because they're able to go into that energy to come out and bring the energy on and, and, and help them over. And yeah, so don't ever think no matter what you've done that you're going to go to hell. Because you're not going to hell because there is no hell. Everyone goes to heaven. You may go to different levels, different parts. You may have different things to work through. Doesn't matter. You are not left. The only reason people become earthbound is because they choose to become earthbound. Um, so no matter what you've done in life, you go to heaven. And it's just a small chapter in a big 500 page book. Okay. So. Tap your feet on the ground because that was quite a energy intense video I'm doing it as well and just get that energy back grounded because we would do these we can get very ungrounded so visualize the energy just grounding back in through your feet coming back to earth coming back to the present day and um, thanking those that have stepped forward and and she just said she hopes she's helped in some way knowing that you're not alone um we'll just help her to retransition back okay
and as she went the whole of the house, I know the, the house is gone now, um, but the energetic blueprint that will still be where it was has just been filled with houses, not filled with houses, <laughs> filled with flowers. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video and you would like to watch more of this content, I do have a playlist for channeling where I've channeled other people, but I've also made another playlist up recently, which is a true crime playlist where you'll find Peter Sutcliffe, Jimmy Savile, who else? And the craze. Okay, and now this one. So thanks for watching. Love to all. Take care and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, where's the press record one. <laughs> Bye.